going on YouTube? Mark Sixma here with my very first music production tutorial video. Today's video is going to be all about kicks. And I'm not talking Bruce Lee Kung Fu kicks. I'm talking about kick drums or bass drums, of course. They are the foundation on which electronic dance music is built. So it's really important to make them stand out in your mix. Are your kicks just not cutting through the mix because there's so many different elements playing? Maybe there's a problem with the bass line. Don't worry, I'll show you how to make them more punchy and stand out in your tracks. If you find this video helpful or enjoyable in any way, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that very much. Also, if you want to see me live in action in the studio, or maybe you want to get feedback on your music, be sure to join my live streams on twitch.tv slash Mark Sixma. All right, let's get back to the beats. So guys, I created a basic uh, project setup, very minimal, just to get my point across. Obviously I have a kick drum here, which is uh, the red part. I'll play it solo for you. Very basic kick um, that I found. Then uh, a super saw with, with, that is playing chords. And the reason why I created these separate uh, parts is because I wanted to show you guys how to make the kick stand out in a mix, not just have a punchy kick by itself, but to help it punch through the mix. So that's why I created the super sauce as well and the bass line here, very basic. So this is not gonna be my next top hit, <laughs> as I'm sure you can hear, but uh, this is how it sounds together. Very messy, right? So what I did now, but what is actually a good place to start is side chaining. So if you want to make the kick stand out a little bit more, you got to make some room for it. And a great tool for that is side chaining. Right now I grouped the bass and the super saw, which you normally wouldn't do, uh, but I grouped them together for, you know, the purpose of this tutorial. Uh, so it's going to be easy to show you guys. So um, I'm in the group track now, the group track lead bass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, uh, well, not technically side chaining, but volume automation, but it comes down to the same thing. So I'm going to open the LFO tool and it already, you know, comes up with a certain curve that you can tweak yourself. And uh, Nicky Romero, I think also has a great, I think Kickstarter plugin. What's it called? Is it, is it Kickstarter? I don't know, but I use the LFO tool. So I'm going to show you how do I set this up. So I want to smooth it out a little bit so when the audio goes low, you don't really hear it dipping that much. So right now it's already side chaining a little bit. And you hear the kick coming up a little bit better already. So without the side chain. Notice how the kick sounds a little bit muffled. So you can bring it up by side chaining. Just creating some space, basically. But I'm not really happy with it yet, so I'm gonna try a few other things to make it stand out a little bit better. Uh, one very simple trick you can do is actually just an EQ curve. Um, let me open the FabFilter Pro Q. And I already uh, put a big spike here with a very narrow bandwidth. That's very important. So let me bring this down for you guys. Uh, and you can hear it while I adjust it. So you have to find a sweet spot for the sample and it doesn't really work if there's no high end in your kick. But in this case, there was already some high end. So I'm just going to amplify somewhere between the 10K Hertz and the 15K Hertz usually is where you can find a good spot to really make a EQ spike for the, yeah, for the kick to, to cut through the mix a little bit better. It's a little bit too, too harsh right now. I'm exaggerating. So you can bring it down a little bit. And now without. and width. Very simple, very basic trick. You can do it with any EQ. Just make sure you have a very narrow bandwidth 
and then somewhere between the 10,000 hertz and the 15,000 hertz. Next trick is a uh, plugin called DS10 Drum Shaper. This is basically a transient designer which is specifically created to uh, bring extra punch to, for instance, kick, snare, or a whole bus, but uh, obviously I'm picking snare here, uh, kick here, obviously, because we're working on a kick drum. And the default setting is like this. So I'm gonna let you hear it without first, and then I slowly start applying the effect. And the orange part is what you see is being changed. So basically the transient, the, the attack, the first bit of the kick that you hear, the volume of that is being brought up and that creates an extra punchy effect. Much punchier than without. Obviously you probably want to bring down the gain volume a little bit because that extra transient will take a little bit away of your headroom that you have. Always try to, you can do a little bit of gain reduction. You can check the meters and see how bad it is and then you can adjust accordingly. But this is a great tool, the DS10 Drum Shaper, and I like that you also have the, the visual feedback on what you're doing. It's really good for this purpose also for percussions, anything, you know, with a nice attack that you want to make even punchier. This is, this is the tool. I really like it. Um, then we can go with uh, something a little bit more standard and that's just compression. I'm going to open a compressor from Cubase for you guys. A very basic one. Um, what you want to do here is increase the ratio quite a bit. The attack, I'll, I'll show you the different settings, but um, around 10 milliseconds uh, works well. Sustain, keep it low, and then the release you can bring down a little bit as well. A little bit of uh, makeup gain because we're gonna compress, we're gonna lower the volume basically. So here, without. And with. Without and with. Not as shocking as the DS10, which is specifically created for it, but it's it's a great way to help bring a little bit of extra punch. You can do it with a compressor. The only downside to it is if you have a very short attack here on the compressor, maybe you will lose also a little bit of the, you know, the, the boom part, like the low sub frequencies of the kick. That's, that's the downside of it. Um, actually one of the, if you, if you're not using Cubase, here's another great alternative to the Vertigo VSC2. Also has this, uh, there's a snare setting, snare punch compression. You can apply it to the kick as well. I would say put it on 10 milliseconds as well. Oh no, that's the ratio. Sorry. Ratio. Yeah. You can put it on 10. Uh, attack around 10 milliseconds, release very short, and then you get a very punchy kick like this. Without. And with. Oh no, actually I have one more trick, and that is layering. Of course, a very important tool in music production. I use it all the time if you want to make your leads bigger or your bases, you know, layering is the way to go. And uh, in this case, I'm going to layer it with a hi-hat sample. So I have this hi-hat sample. Be sure to pick like a short one, a closed hi-hat, preferably. This is how it sounds solo. And with the rest. Um, you know, you, it already helps a lot, but it sounds a little bit cheap right now. So I'm going to apply some pitch. So I'm going to pitch it up one octave actually. And then it should sound a lot more like shorter, obviously, but also punchier. So here is what it sounds like. Without. And with. Makes a big difference, right? It's a very simple trick. 
uh, I would probably advise using this trick over the, the EQ tip because then you can still control the kick and the hi-hat separately. Uh, also, if you want to apply compression, for instance. Um, and of course, if you use these tools together, you know, you can get it even puncher kick. So let me use the hi-hat now in conjunction with the DS10 drum shaper. Very punchy, right? So that's it guys, basically some very, very easy tricks to help you get your kicks punching through the mix. So there you have it, punchy kicks that cut through the mix. Let me know in the comments below if these tricks help to improve your tracks. If you want to talk a little bit more in detail about music production, be sure to drop by at one of my live streams on Twitch. Keep dropping the beats guys and I'll see you next time.